recording. Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is James Franklin and this is my interpersonal communication project for Human Services 508 Studies in Interpersonal Communication. Communication is defined by webdictionary.com as the imparting or interchange of thoughts, opinions, or information through speech, writing, and signs. John Stewart defined communication as the continuous, complex, collaborative process of verbal and nonverbal meaning making. Stewart, in his book, used breathing to illustrate the two very important parts of communication message sending by the talker, which he called exhaling, and message reception by the listener or inhaling. And just like breathing, it's impossible to separate these two processes. Interpersonal communication, then, is applying the process of communication, message sending and message reception, between two or more persons, emphasizing the person. Becoming skillful in interpersonal communication, just like any other skill, can be learned to establish and improve relationships with other people and even a whole lifetime of bad habits can be changed. Once aware of your need for change, these skills can be learned and practiced every day to personally grow and develop one's relationships at home and at work. On this slide, we continue to talk about interpersonal communication. Uh, John Stewart made a statement uh, where he said that the most influential human event is also the most common event, and that is conversation. If you stop and think about it, we have conversations every day, everywhere, with almost everyone that we meet in our lives, at home, at work, uh, everywhere we go. We have many opportunities to practice conversation uh, to make ourselves better. Uh, there are many levels of interpersonal communication that we engage in every day. They can range from indirect relationships with friends and co-workers to even close family fr uh, members. And how we communicate with family, friends, and co-workers is directly influenced by our personality. On this slide, we talk about the DISC personality profile. The D-I-S-C um, stands for four different or basic personality types. The D is for the dominant, uh, domineering, uh, direct personality. The I stands for the more inspirational personality. The S is the steady, uh, stable type person. And the C stands for the one that is concerned or contemplative. Uh, William Marston in 1928 took Hippocrates' four humors and uh, he changed the names that uh, Hippocrates had originally given in 400 BC. He changed them to the DISC profiles that we have today. And the accuracy of those profiles uh, is based in science and has been proved out over the last 100 years. Uh, we studied Mel's, Carbonell's book, How to Solve the People Puzzle, Understanding Personality Patterns. And it's been used around the world in businesses and churches. And we used it to inform me, or I use it to inform me about my personality and its effects on my life and goals. My DISC behavioral blend came back in my assessment uh, by Uniquely You as an SC blend. And the tendencies of SC, you can see on the screen there, um, I think that people expect me to be submissive, competent, intelligent, and knowledgeable. I am people oriented, uh, preferring one on one rather than group interactions. I prefer being behind the scenes to blend in, not aggressive, pushy, or bossy, uh, a good listener and friend. On the negative side, my personality blend says that I don't express feelings uh, openly. I tend to be too reserved and still overly cautious and concerned. I am stable, steady, shy, security oriented, submissive, a servant and a specialist. And over time I've developed other characteristics that may be contrary to what 
the profile says about me. For example, developing leadership traits. Uh, I don't have time to go into my entire background uh, on how I became the communicator that I am today, uh, how I became the SC personality type, but I was raised in a home that said that children should be seen and not heard. Uh, after being adopted, I was quickly socialized in three months, learned how to speak English, uh, started first grade, and I was very shy, quiet, compliant, and I was a fast learner in school. On this next slide is my personal overarching goal that I developed after taking this class. I want to always have an accurate awareness of who I am and the needs that I have. To know how to research and find the resources to meet those needs. Uh, I want to be an empathetical listener at level one according to Burley Allen and master the art of asking questions and in every conversation I have with everyone, I want to share godly wisdom. Enlarging the conversation to me means increasing fulfillment through interpersonal communication, uh, understanding the responsibility and role of each person involved so that everyone is acknowledged, respected, and heard. And this empowers every person in the conversation or the communication event to be empowered. On this slide, potential barriers to enlarging the conversation or achieving my goal. Uh, Peterson would call it the flat brain tango. Uh, Stewart called it in his book a degenerative communication spiral. And it was excellently portrayed in the movie Fireproof uh, through Caleb and Catherine's interaction in the kitchen. Uh, other barriers are focused on internal noise. Uh, I have a tendency to make other people's problems my own, uh, negative internal affirmations, uh, even some bad habits that I learned from early uh, models. Some of my solutions to those barriers, I need to be consciously aware of and remain in the present moment and practice listening and expressing through conversations every day. And you can see some of the other uh, solutions that I've outlined on this slide. On this next slide, uh, we talk about noise pollution, what it is. External and internal noise pollution. External noise is everything that's outside of me as a person. Could be traffic, loud music, children, TV, machinery, crowds. Internal noise pollution include my thoughts, memories, plans, uh, even unshared opinions, judgments, and so forth. And solutions to those noise pollutions, uh, I can take physical action to focus full attention on the speaker, showing consideration and respect. I'll stand clo closer, uh, close the door, block out any external noise. Uh, Jesus even put the crowd out of Jairus' house when he ministered to the mother and father and Jairus' daughter. Moving a conversation maybe to a safe uh, haven where we can share privately uh, and listen effectively, turning off cell phones and so forth. Before every conversation, I'll clear and focus my mind. My plan of action for achieving my overarching goal and enlarging the conversation, uh, I will implement in every conversation, number one, mindful listening, as Stuart calls it. Uh, receiving the spoken word accurately and interpreting the entire message. And Bernie Allen calls it empathetic listening at level one. Listening that is focused, encouraging, and reflecting. And I've got some other bullet points listed here on this slide from Burley Allen that, that she suggests. Uh, every conversation I will summarize as I go along. Thank you for listening to my interpersonal communication project. God bless you.